wait, wait, wait. Three, two, one. Welcome to today's show. I'm here with the Miley Gray from One Hundred Island in American Idol. How was it growing up in your childhood? It was, um, I actually grew up in, Montgom in Montgomery Village, Gaithersburg, Maryland, and it was awesome. I lived um, in Maryland until I was 13 years old, and um, I think the foundation of who I am began there because I grew up with a very diverse group of friends, and I have 11 brothers and sisters, and we don't all come from the same mom and dad, but we lived very close to one another, so I would um, spend my weekends with them, and then I would come go go home with um, and be with my family. But it was very interesting because my parents have a love for music, and so every weekend we would have Saturday morning chores where they would turn the music up super super loud, and we would clean up all day singing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Singing and 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 just um, doing our chores so that we could get ready for our cookouts that we had on Sundays. Is that what you wanted to do? This. Singing has always been what I wanted to do. When I was younger, I used to say that I wanted to be a singing doctor who delivers babies. Um, but I didn't uh, realize what that actually entailed and how much math was involved. And so the singing part stayed, the doctor part went away. Can you take a really quick run a week? A week in Idol. Well, we all lived in a house together. So um, every week we would um, be given a list of songs that we had to choose from. We had to choose three because you didn't know who was going to pick what particular song. And so if you pick the song first, then you got the song for that week. And we would go to the studio to record our backing tracks and, and lay down a, a um, scratch vocal for it for us to practice before we got to the live shows. Um, and it was new because no one really knew what to expect with the first season. Everybody was really excited. We were all naive. We didn't realize how big of a phenomenon it was. So we were kind of sheltered in a little bubble in this house off of um, Mulholland overlooking the valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, um, it was very, very interesting um, because we would either be doing uh, meetings with lawyers or we'd be shooting a commercial for Ford um, because they were our sponsors. But it was all yeah, really yeah. exciting. Um, how was it making your Broadway debut in Bombay Dreams? It was really, really wonderful um, participating in Bombay Dreams and making my Broadway debut. Um, I remember coming here to New York and um, auditioning with Bernie, uh, no, that wasn't that wasn't who I was. Sorry, excuse me. And auditioning for it, and they asked me to give a what I thought was a Hindi dialect in the the reading because I was just reading from the paper um, as I was doing my audition, and they were like, "Can you give us just a little accent?" Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really familiar with what the Hindi accent was yeah. correctly, and so it was the first time that I had the opportunity to learn a dialect, and we had this amazing water feature in Bombay Dreams um, with uh, called Shakalaka Baby yeah. that we got to do at the. Um, Macy's Day Parade, yeah. and so that was my first Macy's Day Parade with um, Bombay Dreams. Yeah. I had to uh, learn Hungarian for a play that, really? I, that I did last year. I did um, Crazy For You, uh -huh. and I had to play the double part of Bobby and his boss, and his boss is Hungarian, uh -huh. so I had to learn how to sing and talk in Hungarian. Wow. Um, you have a stepmom. Do you want to talk a little about that? I have her. Stepmom. Oh. Oh, what do you mean stepmom? 
Yeah. Oh, how am I a mom? How am I a mom? Um, I have a 19-year-old. Yes. Um, I have a 19-year-old son, and I have, we don't say step, we say bonus. Um, but, because um, he's been with me since he was four. Um, I have a seven-year-old and a 19-year-old son. Seven-year-old little girl and 19-year-old son. Um, and it's, it's hard balancing being a mom and working here in New York because my family lives in L.A. and I live here. And my daughter actually left this morning and she said, it feels like you've been gone for 5,000 years. I want you to come home with me. And, you know, we spend a lot of time on face FaceTime. And she'll just keep me on in the house while she's going about her business. And we don't have to talk. She just likes to feel that my presence is there. And the good thing is that she loves Once on this Island. And she's seen it about seven times. And will see it every single time she came, every day if she could. How do I play Papa Gay different than Merle? Well, yeah. one thing is um, when I started rehearsals, um, this voice just came out because I really like the idea of getting. I don't think so. No, um, I really like the idea of embracing the masculine energy of the role because we have because the wonderful Alex Newell plays Mother Asaka and yeah. he takes her to the high heavens yeah. vocally and for me I've never been in a show where I actually get to play in the belly of the beast where yeah. I get to play using my low register yeah. and one day we were in rehearsal and this voice just came out and that's what he wanted to sound like and I was mm -hmm. like oh well, all right, I, I, because I don't normally talk that low, um, but I, I've learned a lot about um, the deities of Haiti. Um, Papa Gay, Urzuli, uh, Asaka, and Agwe are real deities in Haiti, and something that I wasn't familiar with. And when I was reading um, Rosa Guise, My Love, My Love, there were a lot of the of descriptions mm -hmm. about Papa Gay that I found to be very intriguing. Mm -hmm. I loved the 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 um, the slyness. I mm -hmm. liked the the kind of greasy yeah, energy yeah. that he portrayed in the book. Yeah. And as a woman, to be able to play a man, I wanted to explore, well, how far can I take this? Yeah. Um, because it's such a powerful, solid, um, empowering yeah. role, you know, as a woman. Yeah. And I think that Merle and I had different versions of, of how we saw Papa Gay. Any advice from Merle? Uh, just to em embrace it, yeah. Um, can you talk about the goats? Can I talk about Sparky and Peapod? They are quite the handful of love. Um, every time I walk into the theater, um, I have a ritual that I do. I get my hair done first and put my makeup on, and then I go up and I spend time with them. Uh, and I, as soon as I walk in, I go, hey, boys. And they go, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> And they greet me every single day. And even, sorry, that would be mine. Um, even if they, um, um, even if they, if, even if I don't come to them first and they um, see me down the hall, they'll stop what they're doing and they'll look around to see when I'm coming, mm -hmm. and then the moment they hear my voice, they start talking. Mm -hmm. And it's just wonderful. I hear you are working on your own musical. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, there, it's very um, interesting because I haven't been on Broadway in 10 years. Yeah. So um, my last show was Rent. And a couple months ago, my husband and I went to my husband, and I was like, you know, I think I'd like to write a musical. And he's like, yeah, I think that's a really great idea. I'd like, you know, us to, to try to explore that. And so one of the things that I was exploring, ironically and coincidentally, happened to be um, a book that's about voodoo. And I was sitting, I was coming up with all these different concepts because he didn't particularly like that book idea, but he liked the idea of voodoo and New Orleans and 
um, you know, being somewhere around there. And so I was coming up with all these themes and, and different uh, concepts. And I was, it was like the super moon. I don't know what day that was, but it was in December. And so I was outside um, meditating and I thought, how deep do I take this character? Because I wasn't familiar with the Broadway scene. You know, how dark, what's going on in Broadway right now? You know, would they be welcoming of a really dark idea? And so I'm just sitting there thinking about it. And seven hours later, I have the audition to play Papa Jay. And I was like, oh, so really dark is what you're telling me. Um, so we're still, since I've been here, I've been focusing more on Once on the Island. Um, but I have... I've gone back to my original idea because the idea that I came up with was a little too similar to Once on this Island. And having never seen or read Once on this Island, I was like, yeah, so we should not do that. <laughs> How do I think the interactive? Um, how immersive, how immersive yeah. the show is with the audience. Yeah. Uh, what do I think about it? Yeah. Or, oh. Well, I think what it does is it puts you in the world with us. I think when you walk into the theater, you are walking onto this island that's just been devastated by a storm. And you look at the you look at the world around you, which is no longer a theater. There's clothes everywhere. You're smelling the smells of somebody cooking. There's chickens. There's sand. There's a little lake, and there's just garbage all amongst the beach. And you walk in, and you're thinking, "What is this? Where am I?" Like you're intrigued. I think it it, it sparks the curiosity of our visitors because we don't call them get um audience members we welcome you to the island you're you're now a tourist you're now a part of this community with us and what we're doing is taking you into a day in the life of this village that's just been devastated by a storm and how they rebuild themselves up, how they rebuild pick themselves up and stand by one another as a community and as a family and I think it really enhances the production because you're not separate from, you know, there's, it's not like being at a proscenium where it's the stage and cue, but you are immersed in the, in the show with us. See you next time. Bye. Bye. You're welcome, thank 